thanks for watching our video here. Uh, just so you know, we will be auctioning off this piece that is made during the demo. The auction will happen on FCAC's Facebook page. The bidding will begin at 6 p.m. on Friday before our Facebook Live Q&A question. The auction will last 24 hours, closing at 6 p.m. on Saturday. People wishing to bid on the piece will need to go to our Facebook page and comment on the post what they are willing to bid. The winner will be announced on Sunday evening. The bidding will begin at $500 for this awesome piece that Rob is making. So we have Rob here with us. Um, Rob, we're so happy that you're here. How's it going, bud? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Having an amazing time here at this really awesome uh, spot that you've helped put together. Um, I'm hoping that through this kind of uh, programming and um, social platforming, you know, that people can see what a what an amazing place this is, an opportunity to uh, help build a, a really incredible uh, center. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, we've been working really hard at doing some upgrades and um, so we can uh, facilitate having awesome artists like yourself come and visit and make some cool work. Yeah, I'll be putting the word out for sure. Um, and uh, we uh, decided on this evening to tackle a piece uh, that was really kind of new in conception. Um, and it's basically a, a uh, human form, figurative form, that we then are are wrapping in uh, sort of cellophane, almost like uh, garb. Um, not really knowing exactly what we were shooting for, it left a lot open to interpretation, and uh, largely in part by the technique itself and how the team was working together. And I thought by trying this sort of uh, fairly complex piece that we would, you know, entertain folks, but also uh, entertain ourselves trying to figure out how to execute it as a team. It was like jazz, baby. Yeah, it's improv for sure. It was a lot of fun figuring this out. And we, uh, we actually got a chance to build a new piece of equipment that you guys will see upcoming, the Freakin' Fork. So right now here, here we're applying glass color. It's crushed up colored glass. This color is a special dense black and it's being melted onto the glass. So this is going to be the body of the figure. Right. And uh, so you, by putting these layers together, you could build up a certain kind of density and then encase it with uh, an outer layer, which has already been done here. And then I'm starting to shape up the torso of the figure. That would be the upper shoulder area that's hottest. So pulling out the top of the shoulders. And it has to be done in stages uh, in between heating. So here at the workbench, we go over to the glory hole. It's a reheating chamber where we can build up heat and concentrate it in certain areas to manipulate it. Yeah, so it's a lot of heat, a lot of shaping with sculpting. Gravity. And going back to the um, what you're saying about the studio earlier, um, a lot of it pretty much was was able to happen by our Phoenix Glass Equipment Fund and which we do have you can if you wanted to donate to we still have equipment that we need to build and need to acquire and um so if you if you are watching this and you want to get involved in the studio and you want to be a donor you can always go online and um contribute that way we also have donor cards available in person and then uh also we have glass blowing classes now uh to to take there's everything from make your own glass experiences to full-on uh, five-week course of how to be a full-on glass blower and then after that you get access to the studio um, so that was just a little wanted to touch base on that to uh, if you wanted people wanted to be involved in the donation process yeah that's a, that's really something and the fact that we got all these folks out here uh, to watch this demonstration and uh, some of their names are up above the 
uh, work facility there is a, is a real testament to the contributions that allow us to uh, be able to do this uh, really kind of expensive art form um, and try new things uh, like we're doing here. And I can't say enough about the teamwork that is involved in this process. I mean, there's, we have about six or so people uh, kind of running around getting things ready and prepping and for the next steps and stages of these pieces, um, which, which is built largely in components. So while we are working on the main part of the torso here, there are arms and head that were previously made that are kept hot in another small apparatus, maintaining at a thousand degrees, and then when we're ready, we'll bring them out and attach them. So you can see here that the glass is, is really molten. Um, we've gotten it reheated and using tools, various hand tools, knives and tweezers and things to put details into it. Here I'm kind of cutting in the legs, what will become the uh, legs which will split here. And you know, working on this piece, or helping you make these pieces, it really reminds me of uh, a maestro that we both got a chance to work with before his passing, this, uh, the, the late, great Pino Signoretto. Amen. And, and watching you work really reminded me of the, the majesty of, of watching him move glass. So you really, um, it's a testament to uh, Pino's sculpting skills. You could really see it. Yeah, transpire. Yeah, I mean his his impression on all of us is, uh, you know, just really been probably one of the most uh, insightful and um, just inspirational forces for I think I could speak for a lot of folks who have been in it for a while were a lot, you know, fortunate enough to have spent time with Pino here or there at some school. At, Phil Chucker. He was very just an amazing giver of of these techniques, which which he was in fact probably one of the greats of all times. Um, the sensibility, the sensitivity, uh, and the sheer physical capability was just awe inspiring. So anyone who was around, you know, was absorbing uh, so many amazing techniques but also an, a really uh, love for the material, you know, just and how to, you could not only express, but uh, invent and um, sort of it's a journey. It's one of the coolest things about glass is that you could, you could go into a studio in any part of the world and take a gather and other glass blowers are going to it's a language that we can share you know you can go into a studio in Italy or in in China or in um, Africa or in America and take a gather glass and we'll have used some of the same techniques and they will know intuitively what's going on yeah it's pretty pretty cool yeah it's it's an amazing um, club of cult of people that withstand these sorts of uh, temperatures to, to, you know, and atmospheres to do this kind of work. It's so labor intensive. Um, it, it's, it, the crazy thing about the glass is that you, for a lot of the techniques and style of working with it, it has to be done in one shot. Mm -hmm. So you, it's, you know, you start, there's no break. <laughs> so it's, uh, hopefully no breaks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> pun intended. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all in and it just really takes all of your attention and energy. Uh, and then when you combine that with other folks, as you can really see here, uh, you can do stuff you never dreamed of. You've got people who have some skill or are willing to get in there. You can grow your ideas pretty, pretty quickly and, and sometimes monumentally because it's a, uh, it's an art form that must be done uh, in a certain setting, always with the right equipment. Yes. And again, that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to grow here at the Art Center is, is grow our glass program and our, 
uh, state-of-the-art glass studio. Uh, purchasing an annual membership is also a great way to support the Art Center and stay connected with us. You can uh, find out about things like uh, we're about to celebrate our 20th anniversary, um, offering visual arts education in Pensacola this year. And we have our 15th annual pumpkin patch coming up. It's going to be Saturday, October 9th at the Blue Wahoo Stadium, which is, if you, you might have heard, we sold out. We sold 4,500 glass and ceramic pumpkins um, wow. this last event. And uh, before that, we're going to have our uh, first annual Art Bazaar, which will be happening on Saturday, May 29th, Memorial Day weekend. So uh, becoming a, a member would be a great way to stay connected and know about these events that we're having. So this is one of my favorite parts of making this, this piece is uh, applying the, the fabric that you had uh, came up with, um, which is glass, but you know we're, we're shrouding the figure in this cool, sheer, uh, what, what's going to translate as fabric. Mm -hmm. what, what inspired you to, um, to make these pieces and, and what was the inspiration? I think it was seeing, uh, certainly Pino uh, Signoretto had made through the years many variations similar types of things, uh, very classical, uh, you know, taken from uh, Roman uh, marble sculptures and things of this nature. Um, and, and that was always a uh, teaching tool for him to show these more classical uh, approaches with the material. Uh, but I think for me, it was probably seeing some some fashion imagery, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that... Yeah, um, you're in Miami, you're in the... Yeah, you got fashion going brought on. that to the surface. But I mean, this is in large part a departure from most of the things I'm focused on these days. I just kind of took it upon myself to... Really, it was actually about kind of um, implementing this technique here where I thought it'd be interesting if we dismounted from the, from the traditional rod onto this preheated plate which Joe built this fabulous fork for to uh, be able to take it in and out of the reheating chamber and the glory hole, keep it alive because basically the glass has to stay above a thousand degrees. Any one part of it falls below that point, it can crack. And so that's why you see us augmenting certain areas with torches, trying to balance out the heat between different parts of the piece. Yeah, the old Frankenfork. Yeah, that, that <laughs> thing is, is really something. Uh, you know, a little uh, learning curve involved in working this way. Uh, I actually did see Pino work on a piece in this way and, and some, other, uh, uh, some other glass artists certainly have figured out to work in this way as well. But because I was thinking about these pieces being on the wall, I thought it'd be interesting if they already had this sort of flat back to them. Um, it's very inventive. This is a really exciting uh, piece to work on. Um, it was really, I commend you on thinking outside the box and, and coming up with this. It's it a yeah, lot of fun. I, I couldn't have done it without knowing you were here, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, and having the, the background that we've had together um, over the years. In, in trying new things and in growing our work has always been in conjunction with other folks in our industry. It's a really collective kind of consciousness in our, uh, in our field. Yeah, so for those uh, watching, Rob and I met, uh, we've been kind of in the same glass bubble for over 20 years. And we've been out at Pilchuck Glass School together and we've been to Glass Art Society conferences in Seattle and Tampa, um, so it's been it's been a really fun journey to watch watch your uh, career um, grow, and uh, it's been it's been really fun. It's always fun to get together and Likewise. reconvene and and make work together. Yeah, I mean, you know, I can't say enough. I mean, certainly, doing these things is exciting when you're growing your ideas and your work, but for me. And being, you know, in the educational part of the field a lot, uh, it's the excitement that these other folks who are coming up behind us get 
in helping us do something like this, you know. Um, I, it really makes working and teaching fun um, and valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I love seeing that spark in, in people's uh, eyes when they take a gather for the first time or, or make a cup for the first time or pop a bubble or it's such a rewarding experience to be there and yeah. help facilitate that. Yeah, I mean, even in this piece, which is, you know, pretty raw in nature, uh, there's so many kind of moments where we have these little epiphanies, like, oh, that worked, and we know when it doesn't work, or, and, and feeling our way through this kind of an experience together, just can't say enough about the, the uh, combined energy that's going into the effort. I mean, sure, there's the heat and this, you know, strength required in some cases to work, but there's also this incredible um, mental component that's being brought to the process through this group effort. Yeah, we actually have to stay focused, focused for yeah. longer than uh, right. 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think this. So here this, we're, we're yeah. kind of winding up. Uh, it was, a, it was a process to try to figure out how this thing would go together and how we'd implement this plate. Uh, but I think in the end, after a couple of tries, we had some uh, successes, at least in learning, about how we would approach this in the future. And I think that was really my goal more than anything, was just to take the opportunity uh, in the residency and in this really amazing facility with these gung-ho folks to investigate something new, maybe turn over a new rock, you know. Yeah. So we want to give a couple of quick shout outs before we put this piece away. Uh, special thanks to Pensacola Bay Brewery for providing buy one, get one vouchers for cold brew uh, to complement our unique handmade glass and ceramic cups, and which we have uh, online on on our website, check out our online store um, so we, you can snatch up some of these great glass and ceramic cups that we make here. And um, so here we are flashing this piece down. If, if we put the piece away too hot, it'll keep slumping. And here you can see Jacob grabbing it. He's got all suited up. And now it's going to go into what's called an annealing oven. And that's at 920 degrees. And it will stay there for over 24 hours night, night. to uh, cool down slowly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, thanks you guys so much. I mean, it's just really been a pleasure. And I hope I can uh, send folks your way and, and fly the flag for you out there in the field. Yeah, please do. It's been such a pleasure to have you here. And um, we really uh, look forward to having you back. And yeah. um, it's been a wonderful week. And uh, so everybody, uh, please f tune in on for our live Facebook Q&A that will be uh, 7 o'clock on Friday. And the bidding for this piece will start 6 p.m. on Friday. And you have to bid on our Facebook page.